church. Y'all ain't saying, you got all of these pastors. You got all of these pastors. Get your stuff and get out. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And stop trying to pastor somebody else's folk. Preach Apostle J. Sean Urquhart. I can't get no help in this place. Somebody open your mouth and high five your neighbors and you need to obey and submit. Stop calling yourself something that your leader haven't called you. If your leader ain't called you no prophet, you ain't no prophet. If your leader ain't called you no elder, then you ain't no elder. That's when submission and obedience comes into play. I trust my leader enough that he will exalt me in due time. Do you understand the power of the right hand? The power of the right hand is the hand of blessing. Unless your leader put their right hand on you, you have not been blessed. That's why the Bible said, lay hands on no man suddenly. And I, I, y'all forgive me, but we got too many bastards running around with big titles. I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of here. Obey them that have rule over you and submit yourself for they watch for your soul as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief. See what makes leadership job grievous is when we have people that are not obedient and submissive. The spirit of the Lord says that I will hold you accountable for disobedient people. I don't hold you accountable for people that are not submissive. I can get no help. And I don't care what none of you say, that God's about to start whipping leadership tail. He's about to start getting leaders that compromise. You know what I'm saying? They're scared of the people's faces and scared of what mama going to do and scared of what wife going to do and scared. Oh, the devil is alive. You got to get yourself to the place that the only person I'm scared of is God. Lord have mercy. Somebody lift your hand up and shout hallelujah. Listen to what he says. He says, because they give an account, they watch for your souls. Like old Israel, they put a watchman on the wall to discover the enemy's attacks. And God says to the minister, I made you a watchman. Am I boring, y'all? I made you a watchman. We need to cry out like they did in the book of Isaiah, the watchman, what of the night? Y'all ain't saying nothing. Look at the word he says, every leader, every pastor, what do you say? see in the dark. Yes, you know yes, it's easy to see in the daytime. It's easy to see when the light is on. It's easy to see, amen, when everything is exposed. But the question is, what do you really see in the dark? What do you see at night? Y'all don't want to help me, but I feel like preaching. Because any true leader see better at night than they do during the day. Can I preach like I feel it? Too? Put your hand in somebody's hand and say, that's what the devil did wrong. He put me in a night season. And because I'm in a night season, I can see my vision better. I can get no help in here. I want you to touch the mind and say, we and do it. But while I'm in the night, I see it. I see my promise. I see my deliverance. Somebody open your mouth and shout with All right, God, give me 10 minutes. All through the word, there's accountability. God made Cain accountable for his brethren. Nathan told David, thou art the man. Even in Jesus' parable, there's accountability. The unjust steward had to give an account. In Revelations, the devil is made accountable for his deeds. Pastors are accountable for their churches. Men are accountable to God for their homes. Moms and dads are responsible and accountable for their children. Listen to the words of John the Revelator in Revelations chapter 20 verse 11 as he talks about the process of accountability. I'm almost done. I feel like I'm boring y'all. Oh, yeah. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the book 
books were opened and another book was opened which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those books out of those things which were written in the books according to their works do you understand that the books here are human history written only as God does it he's knowing the actions even the secret actions y'all ain't saying nothing he knows the motives of your public actions but the book is the revelation of truth recorded in the book of life better known as the Bible preach boy so God's evaluation is going to be a comparison of the history of my life to the things called for in the Bible in other words ladies and gentlemen your life got to line up with the word I can get no help here that's where you are held accountable you're not held accountable because of personal reasons but when leaders and God begins to get on you it's because there is something missing out of your life huh, that does not line up with the word. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me here. Huh? But doubt, don't doubt it, ladies and gentlemen. Huh? There's a day of accountability coming. Huh? Except this time it will be before God. Huh? There is a second level of accountability. Can I preach here? Huh? It is the accountability of the saints. Huh? When he talks about in 1 Corinthians 3, huh? about every man's work being judged by fire. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, what is fire? Uh, or more importantly, who is fire? Uh, look at what Paul says in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 7. His ministers or his messengers uh, are made flames of fire. Oh God, help me in this place. Uh, in other words, what he says is uh, you will never be as anointed as you think. Unless you are held accountable by another anointed man or another woman of God. I can get no help in this place. Uh, Y'all forgive me in here tonight because I am kind of nervous for the church. Because we hear a lot of people saying they're anointed. But you don't see no accountability. Folks that's prophesying and have a lot of power. Can I preach five more minutes? But you don't see any accountability but I I want you to put your hand in somebody's hand and shake it like you're going to shake it off and say, oh, neighbor, if you're going to be anointed, you've got to be accountable. If you're going to have power, you have to be submissive. If you're going anywhere in God, you've got to be open for correction. If I'm going the Lord, I'm Chest, I feel like preaching. I said, Who the Lord loves? He just And look at somebody. Say, Somebody need a whipping. Somebody need a spanking. Somebody need a beating here. Because the church has become chaotic. The church has gone wild. The church has lost its discipline. And it's all the cause. Nobody wants to come subject. But I came here to tell you your ministry of preaching is wonderful. Your ministry of prophesying is good. But there's another ministry that God is calling out of you. That is the ministry of accountability. Put your hand in somebody's hand and say, Lord, Lord say, Lord, if you're going to go anywhere, if you're going to be in it, God, you're going to have to let go. And you're going to have to let go. And there are two reasons for accountability. Number one is to examine what has been done with an eye toward how well expectations are being lived up to. And then number two, it is for correction. It's so that when I get finished examining you, I can tell you how to grow up. When I did finish examining you, I can tell you what you did wrong. But the problem with the church is we can't tell nobody what they've done wrong. We can't tell nobody your skirt too short. We can't tell nobody don't wear that. We can't tell nobody you're not ready. We can't tell nobody it's not your time. We can't tell nobody Trust your leader. Win. 
is great. Your future is big. Eyes haven't seen. Ears haven't heard. Need. Y'all don't want to help me.